Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please leave me a comment down below as far as to what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another requested Kurtzgazat video called The Business Behind Kurtzgazat. Let's check it out. In 2023, Kurtzgazat has existed for 10 years. Insanely long in internet years. We're among the largest science channels on YouTube and still a bit of a black box to people. So let's talk about ourselves a bit in three parts. Our backstory, how we finance our work, and the values of Kurtzgazat. Let's jump back to a more innocent time. From humble beginnings to today. Kurtzgazat's foundation was laid when Philip, our founder, dropped out of high school as a teenager. Learning seemed daft and useless, and he wasn't interested in anything. Until a very special teacher at a school for dropouts grabbed him by the neck. The way she taught was different. She talked about connections and the big picture. She told a story. For the first time ever, Philip wanted to learn more without being forced. It was a key life experience. Kurtzgazat tries to recreate this experience for you. Nothing is boring if you tell a good story, and we try to tell these stories to spark excitement and make you want to go on and learn more. Because of the one teacher that could do this, Philip got a high school degree, studied history and design, and eventually started Kurtzgazat as a passion project inspired by Crash Course World History. In 2012, YouTube was less commercial and more idealistic. You couldn't make a living with videos as involved as ours, and that was fine. The goal was creative freedom, and so for the first few years, it actually cost money to make Kurtzgazat. We had no outside funding, just intrinsic motivation and a few friends from university. We I do love the story of, you know, your classic kid not being motivated, but then this has that one person to inspire him. I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of successful people can relate to this sort of thing. For clients during the day and on Kurtzgazat at night, 80 to 100 hours a week. It was a real struggle, but also very rewarding. But then Patreon launched, sponsorship started, our views increased, YouTube changed. In 2015, the channel began to break even and then to earn a profit. But we were pretty burned out at this point, so we decided to bring in more friends and hire the first team members full-time, creating a legal entity. More people meant that we could stop overworking, do more, and improve. But we also needed to earn more. The livelihood of real humans depended upon it. None of us had any experience in running a company. We didn't plan to become big or to grow. It sort of just happened. A decade later, Kurtzgazat is not a small project anymore. We are an animation studio with offices in Munich and Berlin. We need computers, monitors, tablets, desks, coffee, contracts, pay licenses, taxes, rent, and insurance. In 2023, our team consists of over 60 employees and a lot of freelancers around the world. Salaries alone cost millions of dollars a year just to stay around. This creates an interesting problem. With such high production costs, how can we publish our work for free? How we finance Kurtzgesagt. We've added up our earnings from 2015 through 2022. Our sources of funding change depending on opportunities and the state of the world. Early on, mm. agency work was our main source of income. Ad revenue varies. In some years, we got more sponsorships than in others. The shop didn't exist for a long time, then it became pretty big after we launched our calendar. 62% of our revenue comes indirectly or directly from you. You watch our videos with ads, support us on Patreon, or buy from our shop. The single biggest source of income by far is our shop, that alone accounted for 40% over the last eight years. The shop started small, but once we published our calendar for the first time in 2016, we realized it... I remember hearing that about the shop. Yeah, there... Their stuff is just fascinating. I mean, if this existed when I was um, a kid or a college student, I would have loved like these big diagrams of like the solar system or, or a cell um, just to put up in my <laughs> in my little uh, room or uh, as, as a kid or in my college dorm room. It's just fascinating stuff. 
really help us do more things and we started producing more and more science products yeah, that one from right our there. posters <laughs> to our gratitude journal or universe scented candles youtube ads accounted for 13 percent and patreon nine percent so without your support we would cease to exist our shop and patreon are our most important sources of revenue and because we see ourselves as science communicators we don't just do merch, but sciencey products that we spend hundreds of hours researching, discussing with experts, polishing up and working on directly with the manufacturers. They are part of the science story we try to tell. It also just feels good to get directly funded by you guys and give you something back for it on top of our videos. YouTube ads are a crucial part of our funding as well, but they are not within our control. True. Then there's paid agency work, which we stopped doing in 2022. It hmm. accounted for 9% of our revenue over the last eight years. A lot in the beginning, not much by the end. Then there are commercial sponsors advertising products. They accounted for 12% of our revenue. We also got about 7% from German public broadcasting for the German channel, but ended this partnership in 2022. Finally, there are institutional sponsors representing about 10%. Some people take issue with this, especially Bill Gates has come under public scrutiny and we've been criticized for even working with organizations funded by yeah. him. So let's look at this 10% in more detail. About 3% of our revenue over the last eight years came from the Gates organizations for a wide variety of topics often suggested by us. 5% comes from mm. open philanthropy and is only used for specific projects. With these funds, we've started Arabic, Hindi, Korean, Japanese, Portuguese, and French channels, bringing more free science content to more people. Then there's a two-year funding for original TikTok content, which gives us freedom to explore and learn how to do short-form science communication. The final 2% came from other organizations like the Red Cross or the UN, for example. We choose institutional sponsors carefully, cool. but if organizations want to fund videos that help us spread quality information about relevant topics, this is an easy yes for us, if we have the capacity for it. On top of that, the institutional sponsors we're working with align with our values. We have contracts with every grant giver or sponsor that bars them from editorial influence other than suggesting topic areas like global health. I have to say, I love the transparency in this. I mean, most people just let me know in the comments the company you work for how much do they really break down and say this is where our money comes from these are the clientele that we work with all the way down to the bottom line depending on where you're at in the company i can tell you it wasn't the case for me <laughs> but i i love the transparency here and it's, it's fascinating in the way they're doing it with like all these squares breaking it down it's a very good way to visualize it's um it's just fascinating. Or climate change. We agree on video topics together, but sponsors can neither influence details nor our conclusions. The mm, final decision good. always remains with us. And usually we develop the topics of the videos autonomously and tell the sponsor what we're doing afterwards. If you're interested in how we research our videos in detail, our head of research wrote an article about it. Running an cool. educational YouTube channel is a balancing act that we take very seriously. We're doing our best to maintain this balance, adjusting whenever necessary. As a team and a company, we want to grow to give more people access to a science-based outlook on the world. This brings us to our final topic. Why are we doing Kotzkazart? Hmm. Our values and our vision. Our core mission is to spark curiosity. We want to make science and humanism accessible for as many people as possible. The effort we put into creating our videos is a way of achieving that. Our videos are beautiful because that helps to spark curiosity, to understand complex topics, and because it just feels good to create and watch. Our research is as intensive. I wish like when I was in high school, or even some classes in college, they had like this level of visual thing, just to give you a high level understanding. Yes, you need to do the deep dive on your own to really understand and master a subject, but just a rough, a rough overview like when you have the introduction to a class just go over it like that then do the deep dive and then watch it again after you complete the class that can really reinforce the learning mentality as it is so our videos are a good simplification of very complicated topics we want to make people excited about <laughs> science so they rediscover subjects they hated in school and see how amazing they are 
on top of curiosity, we want to inspire long-term thinking and a positive, constructive outlook. Being optimistic about the future of humanity is not mainstream, and we think this is horrible. Pessimism often sounds smart and gets more views, while optimism can sound naive. That. But this is a bias that's not helpful for us as a species. So, despite the gloominess of many topics, we want to approach them with informed and well-researched optimism. Not brushing humanity's very real challenges aside, but also not falling into the trap of pessimism. We want to inspire you to dream a little about the glorious future that we could actually build, but only if we believe it's possible. In the long run, we don't only want to do this on YouTube. The idea is for Kurzgesagt to be a positive influence across more media. On our TikTok channel, in the long-form content we're exploring, in apps, in the VR game that will be released later this year, and the oh, games we plan that. to make in the future. That our shop cool. is a central part of this vision. We start our stories with a video and end them with a poster. There are so many things we want to do. And thanks to you watching this right now, we have the freedom to work to the best of our knowledge and ability. In the end, we hope you like what we offer and that we'll be doing something worthwhile for as long as we exist. And hopefully, we'll have a lasting impact by making science and learning more fun for as many people as possible. If you personally want to help us do this, you can watch and share our videos, check out our shop, become a Patreon, or give us an ad blocker exception. We exist because of you, and you have no idea how much we appreciate that you're here. And hopefully, we're less of a black box now. In any case, <laughs> Doing Kurzgesagt for a decade has been a pretty crazy ride. And so, from the whole team, thank you so much for being with us all these years. That's awesome. I'm glad they made a video like that. It's good to show that level of transparency with the viewers. And yes, please continue to watch Kurzgesagt as a, as a reaction video channel that watches a ton of those videos. I can say I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy that and anything to make science of course my bias with nuclear engineering more easily accessible encouraging optimistic i love the optimistic view of things i find it to be far more effective yeah it's it's a great channel i enjoy watching them i hope to continue to watch it make make more reaction videos to them as they continue to grow so it's a uh, I'm glad they're glad they're around. I hope they stay around for a long time. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.